talked through everything on the machine and Nikki has shown you how to use the machine and now I'm just going to talk you through some of the other machine basics to do with general maintenance. So I'm going to show you how to change your needle, how to change your presser foot and then I'm just going to walk you through some of the common issues with sewing so that we can troubleshoot a few of those and if they happen to you, you'll know exactly how to handle them. There's one dial that we haven't yet talked about on the machine and this one is quite scary for lots of beginner sewers. I'm talking about the tension dial, which is this little one here. Tension helps you control how tight or loose the stitches are on your machine and the dial goes from 1 to 9. Now most machines will come as standard with it set at roughly a 3 or a 4 and this is the mid-range of tension for most machines. In fact on a lot of machines the actual ideal number is highlighted. So on this machine you can see there is a box around the number 4. There is also a box around the number 5 and the number three and this indicates the mid-range of tension but as I get lower you can see there are no longer any boxes around those numbers and the same for when I get higher. This is the manufacturer's subtle way of telling you that the ideal tension range for this machine is three to five and right in the middle of four is usually perfect. Now for most modern machines, tension does not need to be changed. There is a common misconception that if your machine isn't stitching right, the stitches look unusual or if you're getting loops underneath of the fabric, that there's a problem with the tension. But in our experience, this is rarely the case, especially with modern machines. If you have an issue with the tension on your stitches, it's most likely a threading issue. If your bobbin isn't properly engaged, if your top thread hasn't gone through all of the thread guides, this, or if somehow it's come out of your needle, this is going to affect your stitches. The only times that you would need to change your tension is if you were sewing a very light or a very heavy fabric. But you should always let your stitches be your guide. If when you're sewing, your stitches look very tight and like they're actually pinching the fabric, that simply means you need to loosen your tension. If, on the other hand, your stitches look very loose and you could easily pull them out of the fabric, you may need to tighten your tension. Tension is very simple. The lower numbers mean looser tension. The higher numbers mean tighter tension. So you should only ever adjust the tension dial by one number at a time. If your machine is on a four as standard and you want to loosen the tension, just drop it down to three, do a little test and see how it looks. If you're on a four and you need to increase your tension, then move it up to five and see how that looks. Very occasionally you might want to move it up more than one number, but you should only ever adjust it one at a time, testing in between to see if that's improved your stitches. If you're a complete beginner, and you more than likely are if you're watching this, you'll be very pleased to know that you can ignore it completely. Leave it on four or whatever the standard tension is for your machine and if you have any issues with your stitches, we guarantee it will be threading. So don't worry about it, put it out of your mind, everything's going to be fine. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to change your needle. Needles are a really important part of sewing because they get dull, just like hand sewing needles do. And a dull needle is either going to snag your fabric or potentially break whenever it hits anything particularly tricky. So you should aim to change your needle every time you feel like you need a fresh start. So a new project or roughly 15 to 20 hours of sewing on the machine. Now in your sewing kit that comes with your machine, you will have a screwdriver. Now I know this doesn't look like a screwdriver, but the little screwdrivers that often come with sewing machines are designed to fit into small places. A full size screwdriver would really struggle to get in underneath the machine. And it's this screwdriver that I'm going to use to change the needle. So your needle is held in place by a clamp under here. And that clamp is controlled by a screw that is always on the right side of your needle. So use your screwdriver to loosen the screw. As you do it, make sure you hold your needle because you don't want the needle to drop into the machine once it's loosened. Just a few turns will loosen the needle 
and just pull it down and out of its clamp. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on the camera, but if you look carefully at a sewing machine needle, you will see that it is round except for on the back where it has a flat edge. And that flat edge is also on the back of the socket that it goes into. So when you insert a new needle, you simply need to turn it so that the flat edge is on the back. And then again, making sure you keep hold of it, you can put it through the foot to allow you to get the angle right and then feed it up until you've got it back into position. Push it up as far as it will go and then use your screwdriver to tighten the screw. Tighten it as, as much as you can. Don't be tempted just to use your fingers to tighten the screw because as the machine is running it may well loosen the needle and it can come out mid-stitching. So it's always best to make sure it's nice and tight with a screwdriver. The other thing that you might want to change if you're using a different stitch or you're inserting a zip is your presser foot. Now most presser feet on beginner machines have a clamp on the back of the shank. The shank is this bar here that holds the foot in place and on the back of it is a small black button and when you press it it will release the foot. If you look at the foot you will see that it has a horizontal bar running across the top of it and it is that bar that clamps onto the shank. So all of the feet for your machine will have a similar bar now this is the most common foot you might change to, this is a zipper foot and the reason I'm demonstrating with this one is you can see that the bar is twice the width and that's because a zipper foot can be attached on either side of the clamp. So depending on which side of the zip you need to stitch on will determine which side of the foot you're going to clamp on. Position the bar underneath the clamp and then use your presser foot lever to go down and pick up the clamp. Now you can see this is quite tricky to do, especially if you're trying not to have your hand in the camera that I am, like I am. But if you keep repositioning it, eventually you will get it in just the right place and you'll notice when you lift your foot, then it's attached. Let me show you on the other side. If I release the clamp, I can slide it over to the other side of the foot and then I'm going to pop my presser foot down and it's now attached to the shank. So anytime you need to change to a different foot, just simply press the button to release, position your new foot underneath, lining the bar up with the base of the clamp and then using your presser foot lever, you can move it down to clamp it and pick it up. And that's how you change your presser foot. So let's talk through some of the most common problems you're likely to encounter when you're sewing. Often for beginner sewers, coming across a problem that they don't understand is enough to put them off and we want to make sure that you feel confident that you can keep sewing whatever happens. One of the most common issues we find for beginner sewers, Nikki's already referred to, and that is when the thread keeps pulling out of the needle. That can be solved very simply by making sure that your tails are six to eight inches long before you start sewing. You can also prevent this by manually putting the needle down into the fabric, turning the hand wheel. This makes it harder for the fabric to come out of the needle before your first stitches are formed. So make sure you check that before you start sewing and it will reduce the amount of times that you need to thread your needle. On the subject of threading, something that a lot of people miss is that when the thread has come out of the needle, sometimes it's actually come out a little bit higher up. So before you thread your needle again, make sure that your thread is still in the take-up lever. If it's not, and you just thread your needle and try and sew, your machine will make a horrible grinding noise and you will get very horrible stitches and it won't do many before it jams up. So if you need to re-thread, don't just check the needle, make sure you've checked all of the other threading areas to make sure it's properly in place. The other thing that can often happen with threading is that your bobbin can come out of its groove. It can become unseated and then it's not being tensioned properly as it moves through the machine. 
This is often characterised by the stitches looking great on top of the fabric, but then being long and loopy underneath the fabric. You will also find that your machine makes an unusual sound when this happens. So if you're not happy with your stitches, it's always best to just open your bobbin case, take your bobbin out and just re-thread it, making sure that it's properly caught into the tension disc underneath. If you do that, then you can be sure that your bobbin isn't the cause of the problem. Often we find that the best thing to do with threading when you're a beginner is not to try and guess what's causing the problem. If it's not threaded correctly, take everything out, the top thread and the bobbin thread, and re-thread them both. Now, we know that might seem like a lot of extra work, but the more you do it, the easier it will become, and it reduces the chance of you misdiagnosing the threading issue. Another very common issue that we've found in our years of teaching beginners is that when you finish your stitch line and you go to pull your fabric away from the machine, instead of there being the two tails that you started with, there are now three. This is very simple and it's caused by the fact that your machine hasn't quite finished closing the loop on that final stitch and so you've got an extra thread. If you were to cut your threads at that stage, leaving the three coming out of the machine and continue sewing, Maybe not straight away, but sometime soon after, your thread will start to get tangled and that extra loop is going to cause you problems. A very easy way to solve that is that any time you go to pull your fabric away from your machine, if you see three threads instead of two, simply turn your hand wheel towards you as you're pulling the fabric away from the machine and you will see that the loop closes and you go back to having two threads. If you forget to do this, and you do still have three threads after you've cut them, then simply pull on all three to find the one that is extra and remove it from the machine before you start sewing. If you do this checklist, making sure that everything is properly threaded, that you've left long enough tails, that you're always checking to make sure there's only two tails instead of three, that you've made sure you have a nice new fresh needle in or that it's been changed when it needs to be, that you're using the right stitch and the right foot for the job, then you should have very few problems when you're sewing. As a final step before you go off and start actually sewing on your new machine, let's just quickly review what other items might come with your machine. And what you'll find is that the more basic your machine, the fewer accessories will come with it. But all machines will come with a few things. First of all, you will definitely have a screwdriver like the one we already used to change the needle. This can be used to change the needle, but it can also be used to remove the needle plate from the machine if you have loose threads in there that need to be removed. You will also have some spare needles. So these are standard size needles for most sewing, often called universal needles. And now I have a pack of three that came with my machine, which means that there's no excuse for me not changing my needle when it gets dull. You will also have a seam ripper. This is sometimes called an unpicker or a stitch ripper. And this is the tool that you use to unpick unwanted stitches. It has a long point that you slide under the stitch and then in the little gap at the bottom, it has a blade. So you slide the unpicker under the stitch and then move it along to the blade where it can cut the thread. For maintenance, you'll also have this brush. Now this brush can be used to clean the machine and you use it to remove unwanted lint and the buildup of dust that you'll find inside your machine after you've been using it for a little while. Then we have some things related to the thread. So this is often found in many machines. It's an additional spool holder, and this can be used when you want to use more than one thread in your machine. Now, obviously as a beginner, you're not going to want to do that for some time. So you can ignore that for now, but it's good to know that you have it for later on. You will also have a couple of other spool caps. So you should use the spool cap that relates to the size of the thread that you're using. So for bigger spools, you can use a much bigger spool cap and for smaller ones, a smaller spool cap. Whichever one seems to fit best for your thread is going to be fine. And if the thread is moving fine through the machine, then don't worry about whether you've got the right size on or not. In addition to the spool caps, you may also have this little disc of felt. 
This is for threads that are moving too freely through the machine, maybe because the base of the thread is too smooth and against the smooth plastic of the machine it's just spinning a little bit too fast as the thread comes off of it. The felt circle will just give the thread something to hold onto, to grip onto and mean that it moves more smoothly through the machine. And you put that onto your spool holder before you put your thread on. You also have some spare bobbins. Now Nikki mentioned this already, but whatever kind of bobbins your machine comes with are the ones you should use. If you have a metal bobbin in your machine, you should only use metal bobbins. If you have a plastic bobbin in your machine, you should only use plastic bobbins. But make sure that they are also the same diameter and the same depth as the ones that came with your machine. So use the ones that came with your machine as a reference. If you're likely to buy more bobbins and you want to make sure that they don't get mixed up, we like to add a little sharpie mark to the ones that came with the machine and that way you'll always know which ones you should be comparing your replacement bobbins to to make sure they're the same as the originals. Your machine will also come with some additional feet. Now that's not the case for very basic machines, some of them only come with the universal presser foot which we've already been using. But most machines will come with a zipper foot now we showed you this when we showed you how to change your presser foot. Some other machine feet that you might get is a clear one like this one here. This is known as a satin stitch foot and you use it to use more, the more decorative stitches on your machine. The clear foot means that you can see the more detailed stitch to make sure that it's being done properly. Then here we have what's called an overcast foot. This can be used in conjunction with the zigzag stitch that Nikki showed you right on the edge of your fabric and you can use this to finish off your raw edges nicely. The little brush that you find on the foot just prevents the thread from locking right onto the edge of the fabric and pinching it in and means that it forms nice clean loops over the edge of the fabric. And finally, this foot here is called a stitch in the ditch foot and it allows you to sew on top of your existing seams and it has a ski that runs underneath it which allows you to slide the foot right in the middle of that seam. So you may get some or all of these feet with your new machine, you may have a lot more feet with your machine, but this is probably the most that you would get in a basic sewing machine kit. So have a look through your machine, see what else is in the box, have a good look at your manual to make sure that you're not missing anything else. If the machine comes with those items, chances are they're going to help you do something that's going to make your sewing a lot easier. So making yourself familiar with what's available to you before you start sewing is always a good idea. So well done, we hope you enjoyed that. We take you through all of the basics, all about the sewing machine, all about the stitches and all about doing a little bit of troubleshooting if you get in trouble. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember that you can go back and you can watch those videos again. So if there was one bit that you didn't quite understand or you've not quite got, you can go back and watch it as many times as you want. And now that you know how to use a sewing machine, after a little bit of practice, there's absolutely no reason why you can't go and do any of the other classes that are on our website. So if you fancy making a bag, or making a skirt, or making a fabric pot, or a zipper pouch, anything at all, then why not go for it? Sewing is all about making mistakes. So don't judge yourself too harshly. We've all been there and you can only get better by giving it a really good go and learning from every mistake you make. So welcome to the Sewers Club. We can't wait to see what you make and take you on a whole new adventure with lots of lovely things to make. So we'll see you in another class soon. Bye!